million dollars worth of game. We love all our supporters out there for rocking with us for so many years. We got everything going on wherever you like. Gilly on Sports, Where's Wallow, Adventures, whatever it is. What you need to do right now, I need you to push the subscribe button, but also share, like. Go down below, get some merch. Share, like, get some merch. Subscribe. We got more to come. Subscribe right now. Million dollars worth of game. Ah. And you know, you're now tuned in to me, 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 Million dollars worth of game, man. I wallow two six seven. This right here is Gilly the Nut, but you know that's that's here or there. You know what I mean? We got Kiss in the building. Yes. I mean, sir. Got J ones in the building. Listen, yes, it's going yes. down, man. Listen, uh, one of the reasons we having this episode because it's important. Is is very really very rarely do I run into um, young cats that respect their dad, that love their dad out loud, and uh, that honor their dad. You know, I grew up at a time where it's though. Your dad was everything. And if you had mm -hmm. one in the neighborhood, that dude was this blessing to have his dad in his life because, you know, when we grew up, a lot of dudes ain't had a dad. And sometimes that dad will be the dad of a bunch of us in the hood. Mm -hmm. You know, come through. Our moms might call him. Could you come talk to him? Mm -hmm. they, you know, uh, a basketball coach, football mm -hmm. coach, just doing anything to keep him involved. So when I first met, you know, Kiss Son, he was at an event. Shout out to James Lindsay Rap Snacks. I was down there. Man, this, this young brother came across so much respect, so much mannerism. He was a conversationalist. Um, he, he, you know, he, he, he was well-groomed. He had his head up high. He wasn't looking down. He looked me in the eyes. I, I had kissed the meeting. I'm like, yo, man, your son on point, man. Congratulations, man. You should be proud. A lot of times we don't honor the father no more. Everything is mother, 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 mother. Um, I understand the welfare. They put the black man out the house. There's a lot of things that took place in the 80s, the crack academic uh, prison. A lot of us trying to figure life out as men. So a lot of time these young these young boys they lose their father and you know that 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 structure that discipline is gone but to see kiss I just want to commend you kiss uh, for just being a real father and and we don't talk about it so much so we go overlook like it's not important it is important because so many brothers is falling short to the streets selfishness drugs or whatever it may mm -hmm. be so to be able to raise yours right man I gotta salute you man because we don't see that all the time man. You know? I appreciate that, you know. Um, like you said, coming up in our era, it was a lot of single-parent households where a lot of the time the dad wasn't there. Like you said, uh, somebody else's dad to be at the helm of everybody or your football coach or your basketball coach or something like that. So I just know the importance of it. Um, me being, with my dad being in my life, like um, I went through a spell when... I ain't talked to him for years in the crib. Mm -hmm. He's in the, right in the same crib, and my mom's out there be like the referee talking through each of us, and that was driving her crazy. And um, you know, I'm just like, nah, I want to make sure anything can happen at any day. You only get one of each parent. You know what I mean? You only get one life. So if you could, if you could have a relationship with both of your parents if you blessed to have them. You should try that. There's nothing corny about that. There's nothing, you know, like we was kicking it earlier low and a lot of dudes is like, a lot of these, a lot of dudes was real live animals yep. in their day and now their sons is like, man, my dad is washed up or he, <laughs> yep. he got to show me what he used to do and that, that, that's a sign of disrespect for one. If right. your dad was an animal or not, he's still your dad. Mm -hmm. right. So you're supposed to have a is a, is a level of respect that's supposed to be there just off that. But um, yeah, you know, just trying to just trying to make the best out of life. If you which your seeds is everything. So you know, if you can if you can create memories and build generational wealth and do things like the other people do that they don't expect us to do, is it, more than. We, we overdo with doing things like this. So, you know what I mean? Just try to love yours. It, Let me it, get a youngin' some game too, right? To all the youngins that's up and coming, if you got a dad in your life and he took care of you, he raised you, he raised you up to be the man that you is, and then all of a sudden you get to a certain age and all of a sudden your dad a nut ass n****. Nothing your dad don't say don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. It don't. That shit is crazy to me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you got a lot of youngins who was raised by a good dude, whether he was in the streets, wasn't in the streets, he was raised by a good dude, he put a solid foundation on you, he gave you some good game coming up, he was 
at all your graduations. He was a part of your life. And then he, you get to a certain age and then you'll take advice from a mother that didn't play no role in your life. Your you, age. Your age. And now, now your dad, which he said he, uh, he, he washed up. He old. He don't know what's going on out here. He y'all need to stop that shit, man. Real talk. A lot of y'all be in a better position if you had a real old way that you would listen to That's a fact. and take some game from. This episode is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. Right now, I like to give a shout out to all the people whose jobs is to hire. Everybody whose job it is to hire, I'm gonna give a shout out to y'all from the small business owners growing their team to the HR directors hiring hundreds across the nation. You have one of the toughest jobs. But what if I told you that mm. there was something better for you? What if I told you it was something special and, and even easier? And that's Zip Recruiter. Right now, you can use it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash game. You can utilize this to find the people that you need to hire. You know, instead of you doing all the hiring, Zip Recruiter will work for you. Once you post your job on Zip Recruiter, it sends it to 100 plus job sites. You, I'm talking about reach out to more and more people for you. Right then and there, Zip Recruiter powerful technology scan thousands of resumes for you to identify the people whose skills and expert experiences matches your job. I'm talking about the skills and expertise matches your job right there. Zip Recruiter, I'm talking about is trusted by millions. So you don't have to worry. I'm talking about it's trusted by millions and millions of people. You don't got to worry. Hiring hero. Listen, all you hiring here, I'm talking about the hiring heroes out there. Everybody that's like a hero of hiring. Like he's a hero of being a loser. Um, let Zip Recruiter help you make job easier. Four out of five employees who post on Zip Recruiter get quality candidates within the first day. See for yourself. Go to this exclusive website and try Zip Recruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash game is in. Again, ZipRecruiter.com slash game. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And it just be sad because the curse continue because most of the young cats, you know, uh, and, and I'm speaking from a different point because I remember when I was young, me and my brother used to go see my step pop in prison at Dallas, you know, uh, penitentiary. This was in, and I got to share this story. I shared it before, but this was in like the 80s, the late 80s. We used to go to see me and Steve, me, Steve, and my little brother, Jalal. This was my little brother, Jalal. Dad, rest in peace to hip. Rest in peace to my big brother, Steve. So all three of us used to go up there with my mom to see him. We go up to the prison to see him. I used to love to come back. Hey, can we go on his mom? We going to see hip? We go up there. I got a picture with his, we on a visit. It's me, Steve, Jalal, and hip in the prison yard. This was in the late 80s. 1998, me and my step pop were cellmates in that same prison. 2000 and 2005, me and my brother were cellmates in that same prison that we came to see our step pop at. So you were talking about generational incarceration. The only one that didn't make it was my little brothers. He was smarter than all of us. Mm. So a lot of times you had these the fathers coming out of prison. And, and, and I talked to a lot of young cats like, yo, take it easy on your dad. A lot of y'all be mad at your man because he went to jail when he was 15, 16. He just had you. He, he was a kid. A lot of y'all fathers go to the penitentiary when they kid come out, try to establish him. Y'all looking at him like, man, he left you, whatever. He didn't even know life. You see what I'm saying? So it'd be like, a lot of times, y'all fathers be trying to stop y'all and stop the curse of that that that, that incarceration that living. Been on thing. That's just like your dad telling you, hold oh, man, don't get high, man. Don't do this or don't do that. He's just trying to tell you and protect you, but a lot of y'all don't listen. And then a year later, a month later, I'm getting a phone call on the three-way and you calling me with your uncle or your mom because you want to holler at old here wallow that and told you when I pulled up on you when, when you was on the corner and you had that switch or whatever you had on you and you was doing you. And I told you your dad was thorough. Now you got 30 to 60 years and you tell me, oh man, you was right. It's too late. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I see you when you, I see you when you're 60 or 50 something. So, you know, it's just a blessing to see this man. And it's important. And, and one of the things that I like that y'all got going on, not just your son on point, listen to y'all got a business together. Yeah, facts. Kiss, Kiss Cafe. And I'm like, oh, man, this is just, that is just magical. You know, to, to be able to raise your kid, he on point, and now y'all getting money together. Tell me about this Kiss Cafe, man. It all connects with what we're saying because in the beginning, like I said, me and my me and my dad had a lot of turmoil mm -hmm. um, in the house. And he been, he was in coffee. He raised me off working for coffee. He worked, he came up here from Memphis, he met my moms. They had me, and he worked for General Foods, of the the coffee the division, the coffee division of General Foods. 
Um, oh, so he then he beast. learned. Yeah, he he He's started like behind it. He started. Yeah, he got forty some years in coffee. He started uh, on the selling and trading coffee, hmm. but he would always he would always like yo. You gotta do. You gotta do a coffee. We should do one. And I would brush him off like, man, I ain't doing no coffee. <laughs> then, <laughs> know what I mean, but he wouldn't get mad. He'd just keep doing his thing. And then yeah. once, once he finished, he graduated Clark Atlanta. His vision was for him to take over the company. And, and then, unfortunately, like, granddad, I, I don't want. I ain't sitting at no office. I don't want to do this either. And um. After I did the first verses with Fab, I was jaded drunk. And my kids was over over my mom and dad's crib. And they was letting them look at the comments. And they like, yo, get kids some water or get them some coffee or something. Then that's the idea came back in his brain. He like, yo, maybe you need to do a coffee for when you get a hangover. And then we scrapped that whole idea. We didn't want to... <laughs> You know, affiliated with the with being being drunk, a, being a drunk or inebriated yeah. or anything like that. So then, after the other, the second verses with Dipset, the phone, the phones is ringing off the hook. He like, yo, you're getting a lot of, a lot of money, a lot of momentum, a lot of traffic. I think it might be a good time to let's launch a brand now. And um, me, him, and my dad sat down. Started thinking of, you know, creating the blends. He was making them right there, roasting them right there in the office. We kept naying them till they was right. Uh, we called in Seth Free and his wife from the compound to do the marketing, you know, keep it in house with our people. Mm-hmm. And um, we Shout launched out to it. Seth Free, Philly. We going on a year. We, Man, we, yeah, we, we, this is our second year. Yeah, we, we going on two years now. But, um, yeah, the response has been great, you know. We... People love the coffee. It's not like a money grab. My Quality. dad is really like El Chapo coffee. He's like one of the only <laughs> black people on the in the coffee game that that's really sound and really knows a lot about coffee. So it's a quality I mean? product. It's been great. Yeah. Now, what I like about this is if you pay attention to our stories and uh, coming from the ghetto, I just told you about three different three three generations of incarceration. Now they just told you three generations of doing business together. Now they doing business. There's three different generations. We got to support stuff like this because one thing about us, we love supporting everybody else. We love devaluing ours. Oh, they, you know, this logo, I only respect. We we got a thing we're respecting certain logos and we devalue ours. Damn, yo, Kiss got a clothing line. This person got a clothing line. I ain't going to pay 75 He wants $75 for a T-shirt. You just paid 1100 1200 for a Gucci T-shirt and it's the same manifest, it's the same feel. Like, we got to stop devaluing our stuff and start valuing our stuff. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, if you don't bring value to value, devalue value. We always want to, we want, we, we want all this. Oh, yeah, I'm this, I'm this. How you, how you this, you this? You don't even believe that you the shit. Because if you believe you the shit, you're going to believe that what we create and what we make is the shit. But you think, oh, that's less than. No, the, the packaging is right. The mm-hmm. branding is right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This is real stuff by us. And the one thing we could guarantee is the coffee is the right. Because his right. dad been doing that shit for coffee 35 is an years. Expert. He's an expert. 45. 45. 45. Damn. He's, a, he's an expert Bro, in the field. I, I was two when he Listen, started this shit. He's, a, he's <laughs> an expert in the field. So you need to go grab some of this. Kiss Cafe. Listen, all the, all, I'm talking about all the, I'm talking about all the cafes, coffee shops, you know, around the country. I ain't just talking about black coffee shops. I don't care. Yeah, coffee we ain't shops. discriminating. Coffee shops. If, we you ain't love, discriminating. if you love hip-hop and you love us, support. Absolutely. KissCafeCoffee.com. Kiss Order up. KissCafeCoffee.com. Y'all got wholesale? Y'all got, yeah, we got wholesale. wholesale. Order. They got any type of thing. You just want to get something for the crib? Mugs, or you want to get merch. Something? We mugs, got mugs, merch. mugs, merch. We got beans. We All got stuff. roasted. We got the Kiss Cups. Mm. We got to call them the right K-Cups, the cups, but they the Kiss, kiss cups. cups for the, mm. you know what I mean? You want to just make it the right instant in right in the machine. We got it all. Right. That's what I'm talking about, man. What's the, what's the, what's the uh, website one more time? KissCafeCoffee.com. KissCafeCoffee.com. So, right, this episode of Me and Lives Worth a Game is brought to you by no other than yeah. New Amsterdam, Amsterdam Vodka. Vodka. Now, uh, life ain't going your way. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. <sighs> Caught your bitch cheating today. Shot a New Amsterdam vodka. You thought them f-ing Eagles was going to win and sh- didn't go your way. Couple shots of New Amsterdam vodka. 
It's distilled <laughs> five times. It's five. filtered three times three. for a clean, crisp finish. You could drink it straight up on the rocks, juice. Mm-hmm. Or with some Kiss Cafe. Mm-hmm. Uh, may make you a little martini, a little wake mm-hmm. up. Yes. Talk heavy. Mm. Yes. Mm, I like that. Well, you could drink you could drink this with juice, soda, straight up, on the rocks, or you can make a classic New Amsterdam or or you could drink it with some Kiss it's Cafe. Cafe. Yes. But either way, when you're out about at your local liquor store, don't you walk past this bottle. You hear me? You pick it up like a goddamn fumble in the playoffs. And you run to that register, boop, get home. Yes. You can drink it how you want it, but just make sure you enjoy it. New Amsterdam Vodka, official vodka for bar stool sports. Shout out to the New Amsterdam Queen. <laughs> I like that. New Amsterdam <laughs> Vodka. <laughs> now, guess, I mean, you know, um, did you ever think you would still be here this long, relevant in the culture of right now? Mm, that's a good question. I don't, I think so, but I, I, I don't know if I would still be around with this much fluidity but I think I would be because I think myself my brothers the locks a couple of us that's left we embrace we embrace the new cats you know mm-hmm. what I mean we embrace the new stuff we we don't mind giving them game the ones that don't mind listening and um, I think that gives us legs besides staying in the stool you gotta anything you do repetitively, you're going to become a master at it, like you two brothers. You know what I mean? I got in this game and became masters at, at your craft. Thank you. Um, mm. So I think definitely staying in the studio will uh, keep you around. I, I knew with us owning our own studio, and, you know, being in there a few times a week, damn near every day, you're going to you stay on your A game. But if you, you listen to what's going on and kick it with some of the youngsters and you know what I mean? Some of the good ones. Man, it helps your career. Now, Jay. Well, let me ask Neff a question. Yeah, Jay, what, what, what game, you know, you come up watching a legendary, a legendary hip group, right? What what game that you got from watching your dad and your uncle, like, that you utilize right now? You got to be patient. Mm. You got to get people around you that's loyal that like really want to see you win that's in it for you like they got to believe in you push you when you feeling lazy or not like you don't want to do nothing those are the people you got to have around you those are the people I keep around me I don't really like nobody I just want to kick it with me and we ain't building we ain't doing nothing what we doing how I'm helping you how you helping me how we gonna win so you gotta have those type of people around you mm. now was when- it hard growing up being Kip's son mm-hmm. man nah nine yak is it Everybody in Yonkers is family, so for me, it was regular. It wasn't none of that. You don't really get that in Yonkers too much. You get it, but it is more so. That's family back home. What were some of the perks? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I got a couple things of all my pops, you know what I mean? <laughs> a couple little things, bless my peace. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Kiss your dad. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't never know the old older chicks like me like that. Uh, <laughs> you probably no. Come I don't on, know. Man. I mean, it depends. It depends on the um scenario, the situation, whatever the case is. For real, for real. We trying to be modest. You keep telling you. Nah, I really you know do. I, mean? I can't think about it. It really depends. Recklessly. Yes. My sons would. I wonder if they would have told the truth. No, we got in all the concerts for free. We got all the oh, no, picks I feel for like free. That. Yeah, yeah. Because we ran right up, Gilly, my dad. Oh yeah, come on. <laughs> so you was in a different space than all the other kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I start using that older. Like I don't really like using that. It's more so like we're gonna come around. We're gonna come around. We're gonna vibe. It's how you carry yourself. That's really the main. But I'm talking about when you're young. Oh, young. Like what age though? Twelve, <laughs> thirteen, good. Good. fourteen. <laughs> oh no, I wasn't knowing that. If you knew, you knew. Oh, okay. But I was fly. That was the best perk. You're going to stay fly. You're always going to be sharp. Oh, ain't wow. nobody going to turn down nobody that ain't fly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Talking that shit. So let me ask you a question. Is you a new rapper or do you you got a little bit of old school in you? Like like if I was like, no, spit, give me a 16 right now. Could you go right in right now? I could do that. You want 16? What you waiting for? 
I tell you how it feel if it's not used against me. They say they don't, but I know deep inside they do resent me. Youngin, he do be spiffy, and he keep a cougar with him. I mean, she old, but for me, this the newest kitty. I left the butt alone. Bird brain on the other phone. Cut the butt line. Cut the hat. Cut the bat line off, because bird brain mad I'm at my other home. I'm a dog, true. I'm just looking for another bone. Another day tomorrow, shit, I probably have another zone. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking uh, about. He like the mole chicks, yeah. He, he like, like the cougars. He, he like been the riding with the cougars his whole life. They've been on him. No, you know. Dad ain't around. Cool. Come here, youngin. <laughs> Kiss your dad. Yeah, she did regular rap though. Not. Yeah. I'm. I'm just proud of. He ain't. I rhyming, like rap. Rhyming crazy. Man. No, he you, sound like he from. On, he sound on. like he from New York. It's it's like, some of your favorite rappers. My my favorite rapper is Cole. My favorite rapper. That's my number one. J Cole. J Cole. Okay. Jermaine Cole. Nas. Of course, my pops. That's what I'm talking about. Styles. Um, Fab. You listen to me, little baby. I like rappers. Like I like yeah. real rap. Cool. That's nice. Yeah. I get down there to that That's dream. That's my goal. Is your, to, is your pop to top dream. five dead or alive? Yeah. He in oh, my all top right. five. Oh, all right. Who else in your top five? About to say. Cole. Okay. Nas. Mm. 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 Last two get shaky. Mm. We going to put Ye in there. Mm. Okay. Ooh, That's we're gonna put We might put SP. I've been listening to a lot of SP. Okay. Now, to kiss, Coach. to kiss. Uh, like every time I see, you, I'm like, yo, what's up? I need a mixtape album. Like, can we get something? Could be like we out here starving. Like, what's going on? Like, you know what I mean? Is we gonna get give a two for one right now? Oh, we get a lot. Oh, no, I mean, yeah. it's Cam and Mace. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they they don't miss nothing. Nah, nah, I'm trying to drop two projects. Um, you know what I mean? I'm having some meetings right now with Def Jam. I actually got one tomorrow with them um, just to get all of the... Because I don't like the... I like to just... When you come from the streets and being a hustler, you just want to be transparent. Because this is what we're going to do. You know what I mean, let's look each other in the eye and and then... Deliver and go from there. You know what I mean? Uh, we don't gotta lie, do a bunch of lying, do a bunch of. We don't have to go to Philippe's and, you know what I mean? A bunch of smoke and mirrors. You know what I mean? It's more like a. It's almost like jail. Oh, y'all two projects. Here y'all go. Handshake. And, and then figure it out after that. Sayonara. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah, but I'm coming this year. Definitely. Let me know if you need any, you know, need me to feature on something. I, you know, I got the f- out of here. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm just saying. Well, I might man. get the million dollars worth of game feature on I mean, there. I, I, they, I, I, you might get I take mean, something off a clip. How many albums y'all been on already? Because I don't want to be corny. No, I mean, no, just ain't saying. Uh, you, you just, you, I mean, you talk about talking? No, I'm talking about spitting. Like, no, shit. <laughs> I still got a clip. I got, I got a good, I know I got a hard 16. If kids say he go beat low. I'm gonna go and put a hard oh 16 my together. God, kiss, don't you even entertain I'm it? I'm just that saying, man. Like, you hear me? You hear me? I go down in you the books. You gotta write it for him. You yeah. understand? I go down in the books after that. I get on Kiss Joint, it's a rap. I'm a hip hop historian. He did win all the prison talent shows. Man, get the f out of here. But you, he wasn't rapping though. He was singing. Can you feel it? Yo. Can you feel <laughs> it? What? what? Can you feel it? Yo, that's a pause. That's a pause. Oh. That's a pause, Can you right? Feel it? That's an ultra pause. I'm saying what you, I'm saying what you were saying. I ain't never seen it like that shit. Oh, shit. Never shit this shit. But no, kids. <laughs> like, want some real shit? This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Body Armor. Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Body Armor. Real hydration, real ingredients, packed with electrolytes, vitamins, and nothing artificial. Body Armor has a great tasting sports drink flavors like strawberry, banana, and blue raspberry. Not only do we hydrate with Body Armor, but some of the best athletes in the world do as well. Like Christian McCaffrey, y'all. Christian B. Reed. That's a bad dude right there, Christian. I ain't going to lie. You a bad dude. Touchdown, Joe Burrow. Another bad dude. Ronald Acuna Jr., uh, a bad dude. Uh, C.D. Lamb, <sighs> much as it hurts me to say, because he plays for the Cowboys and I'm an Eagles fan, he's a bad dude. And Bryce Young, my young, and of course y'all see me playing basketball with Bryce. You feel what I'm saying? So make sure 
you get you some body armor. It's available in stores nationwide, but you can head over to Body Armor Store on Amazon and get you yours ASAP. I really love the Body Armor Water. Well, y'all can see when I be on my live streams and all that. Guess what I'm tapped into? The Body Armor Water. I love it. Body Armor, make sure you get you some. And it's just like that. I'm talking about tapes, cassettes. Used to run around listen to your shit all the time in jail. Like it was just like classic shit. When y'all first came up, like I told him, when when y'all first came out, when them Desert Storm mixtapes came out, I was the first one to bless them with because dudes wasn't even up on them like that. Desert Storm, when they was coming out, Luminati, all that shit, Luminati, it was like y'all was 16 bar barbarians back then. Um, was it easy for you? Because I always said it was easy. Like, and when I first first started managing Gilly and pulled them in, and we became a group. <laughs> yeah. No, on some real stuff, I always liked it to be in a rap group versus to be by myself because all I got to give, we, we, we just battling 16s. I mean, I know y'all had some of the historical moments where y'all were just in there. Was it much more easier as the group than, the, than when the solo came? Definitely. Without a, without a, without a question is, um, I mean, you don't want to get your ass chewed up but it's also like motivational. It's easier when it's, you know what I mean? When you're there alone, then you gotta create a, create something that's a little bit harder opposed to being in there with Styles and Luch and hear what they say, mm. and then it make you, it keeps your, your sword sharp, you know what I mean? You know, nobody wanna be the, say you had the least best verse of the song which makes the song better because everybody feels that same, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Same shit with the figures, same shit with state yeah. property, same shit with, you know what I mean? Somebody come out of that booth that just said that shit, you gonna go in the corner and, and, and make I ain't sure. Never had, I ain't never had that problem with me and Gil. I always, I do my shit and he let him go. I let him anchor the joint. I was like, man, they still worrying about what I said. By the time he come oh. on, he can anchor the song. You know what I'm saying? Cause you, Cause you know when the motherfucker Anchor the song, they gonna go crazy at the end. Cause you know you got that last, you know what That's I mean? That's why you let me anchor it. <laughs> no, but you ain't never do nothing. The f I mean, you ain't never had nothing. Well, I'm like, damn, let me go do my shit over. Bro. Here, here go after me, do his shit, then do his shit over again. <laughs> Like that's how he was Ooh, in the studio. Like, double like I gotta do this shit over. He'd be like, no. Say it he'd, ain't be like, so. he'd be like, no, Kiss I don't you, like that. Cause you ever he'd did a verse over? Yeah, I did shit over. Who but, but who you was on the song with? I think I, I did verses over for my own, on my own. I threw away verses that dudes would probably went to the label and said, make this my single. But like I, I, Kodak, I did a verse over for Kodak. But it was funny because the song is like about our moms. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what the? You want me to go deeper into my... Yeah. <laughs> what kind of lotion she used on me? <laughs> <laughs> the temperature of the milk she did. Kodak was like, yeah. Go I deeper. did it over for my neck. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, this ain't one of yeah. the, This is not like one of This is a song. For, it's like their mama. Mm -hmm. You expecting Kodak to say you some, shit, some other type of shit. <laughs> yeah, but then, you know. But it was so probably a good song. Yeah. Kodak out of shit, man. Free Kodak, 20 locker right free now. Free act. Yeah, free act. Yeah, yeah. yeah free now, act. Now, you're watching another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game Business Spotlight where we give you the information that you need more yes. than anything. Listen, man, to all those Hall of Fame couch warriors and basement warriors out there that's doing nothing. Mm. You got a girl. She come to chill with you over your mom crib. Mm -hmm. You living in the basement. You're on the couch and you playing the game. Mm -mm -mm. You playing the game. So that means in your man. life. In your life, you playing the game. Slick. Mm -mm -mm. Now, what's going to happen is uh, Ricky... Uh, Ricky Romance is going to come and take her. Because mm -hmm. he's going to take her to a restaurant that you well, can't Ricky take her to. Ricky the donut glazer. Yep, you keep eating mm -hmm. leftovers at your mom's crib, throwing them in the, the air fryer in the microwave. Mm -hmm. Playing all, you know, you didn't, you didn't beat all records of Madden and all that. You mm -hmm. keep inviting her to the basement on that couch mm -hmm. that your uncle used to sleep on, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, when he used to stay at the house. My f got more, dented, more dense than a f 86 Honda all prelude, that. man. All that, but the day you get down with that millennium money, right? Mm. I mean, and uh, the when, melanin, when, when, money. melanin money, you know what I mean? You know, but yeah, you know, he, he started, he got his first, read his first book in prison. Yeah, I did actually. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know. It was, it was a great read. Mm -hmm. It was a, 
It was a street novel. Mm -hmm. But uh, I will say this. Today we got my man George Action Pack up here. His mm -hmm. name is something else, but you're going to call him whatever you want to call him. But he's Action Pack with this financial information that he's giving you, this flagship investment portfolio that he's going to put you down with. He's just going to give you that. So you can do your own play. And what you got to do is you got to text MDWG to 704-270-6477. Mm -hmm. 704-270-6477. Mm -hmm. Now listen, George, give him the game, man. Tell him who you are. Tell him what you got going on. But listen. You got to tell them your proof of concept right. because what happened out here is a lot of things. Ever since they gave people a microphone mm -hmm. and a, 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 how can I say, a username, mm -hmm. everybody always saying what they can do, mm -hmm. what they will do, what mm -hmm. they might do, what they mm -hmm. thinking about doing, mm -hmm. but ain't nobody telling them about the proof, mm -hmm. like the Facts. proof of concept, what they done. So basically Who, you're saying people saying a whole lot, but ain't saying nothing. A lot of people was capping. So, mm. so George, tell us why you're not capping and why everything you're talking about today is real. That's a big fact. So thank you for having me on the pod. Mm -hmm. uh, so number one, um, there's about 100,000 investment advisors in the world, and I'm one of the top 100. You can, you can Google that. Um, I'm a Forbes contributor, right? So Forbes vets you have to determine who is the best in the industry, who is qualified to give the information away. And so I'm a Forbes contributor. Every single month, I write articles for Forbes. But more importantly, um, I've helped hundreds of people invest millions of dollars and build wealth. Most importantly, my sister, whose birthday was just earlier this week, just turned 40, She's retired from corporate America. So it's not mm. something that you got to be an entrepreneur, you know, doing nothing funny on the internet. Like she's a regular employee and is retired on her 40th birthday because mm. of the help that I helped her, helped her with. Now, what have you done though? What have I done? Yeah, tell them all the moves you made. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been a financial advisor for the past 12 years mm. and I own and operate an investment advisory firm. But the thing is, we can only help clients one on one. So I wanted to figure out a way how can I help more people, right? And so I launched an education platform called Melon and Money. And our goal is to help 100,000 people that look like us achieve their first 1 million in net worth so we can close the wealth gap by $100 billion. Mm -hmm. now, now, this information in the flagship investment portfolio, what type of game is you giving up in there? Well, here's the thing. Everybody on the internet wants to overcomplicate investing in the stock market. It's really not that deep, right? So if you if you look at McDonald's, right? McDonald's spends millions of dollars in research trying to figure out where they're going to put the next McDonald's. Mm -hmm. How does Burger King figure out where they want to put the next Burger King? Mm -hmm. They put it across the street from McDonald's. McDonald's already has already done the research. So with my investment portfolio strategy, I look at Vanguard. I look at all the top people, all the top firms who put millions of dollars in the research to figure out what needs to go in these funds. And I just dive in and say, okay, well, shoot, if they've already put all the money into determining what should go in this fund, it might make sense if I use that as a base mm. for my portfolio. Mm -hmm. So 50% of my portfolio is just buying funds that have been heavily researched, right, by the top companies. Then from there, I dig a little bit deeper. I'm like, okay, well, what are the top, what are the, what are the investments that are really keeping this fund up, right? Is it Apple? Is it, Met, is it Meta? Is it Google? Is it Facebook? And then from there, I buy a little bit more of those. So now I have this, what you call a core satellite strategy, where now I have a base that is doing well. And on top of that, I'm buying the individual companies that are outperforming all the other ones. And that's how I'm able to beat the stock market every single year. How much money do you need to get into the stock market? That's the beautiful thing. You can get, you can start investing for as little as $100, right? Mm. Um, you, don't, you, don't need, you don't need good credit, right? You literally can open up an account in five minutes and start investing, right? It doesn't take much. You can invest $50 a month. You don't have to have a ton of money to get started. You just got to get started. Mm. All right. What's the first thing you got started on? First thing I got started on, actually my first like serious investment, the one I kicked was Apple. Yeah. So back in 2013, I bought shares of Apple, never sold them. And of course, I mean, you, some of it's just common sense, right? We all, all of us right now, everybody in this room has an iPod. <coughs> mm -hmm. Everybody probably has an iPod. Everybody has a laptop. So some of it's just common sense and being like, do I believe this company is going to be here for the foreseeable future? Right? If so, does it make sense to not just be a consumer and actually own a piece of it? Right. So, mm -hmm. so you get you can invest in Apple. So what is the competitor? Because that a lot of people do got them, but it's more Android users in the world than it is Apple. Right. So who who is that company that you invest in? Who like who is the who's the competitor of Apple? Yeah, Microsoft. Well, the, well, the thing, well, Microsoft. I wouldn't say is a competitor of Apple. I I, I kind of look at Microsoft as the like more so like B two B. Right. Mm -hmm. And I look at Apple as B2C, right? Like they go Explain to the B2B and B2C for the, for the yeah, viewers. Yeah. So, so, you know, explain so B2B, that shit to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so B2B is what y'all do, right? So, like, y'all give out all to get me and I the game every single week, right? Mm -hmm. But then when a corporate sponsor wants to come in and write a check, it's like, oh, yeah, look, I got to tax y'all, right? So, B2B, I feel like Microsoft is more heavy in the B2B space, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Apple is more heavy in the B2C. Like, all of us have cell phones, right? So, they're selling their target market is us, mm -hmm. right? Whereas Microsoft target market, I feel like, is more so businesses and not individuals. All right, now, but but who is that that you would go in? Because you, like you said, if the if McDonald's already do the research, they already got the McDonald's. I'm gonna put a Burger King right across the street from them because we know the people looking for that type of 
They already did the research to say, is traffic coming through here? People going to want McDonald's. Is it a big chance they might want Burger King because they flame broiled and all that type of stuff? Because he love a Burger King. <laughs> yes, you like, you like Burger King burgers? He all love right. it. He love Burger King. And the fries. Tomatoes and tomorrow. the chicken fries. You love it. The chicken fries. Yeah, yeah they got see, chicken you ain't even know they had them. Look at go good vegan eating ass. <laughs> He's ain't a fast even know food. Y'all got the, the, the plant based sports drink. I yeah. just didn't think yeah. you would eat the fries. Yes, I will. I eat the fries and drink a pure fuel. Yep. You love <laughs> Fast it. as a motherfucker. Now, 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 the reason I'm saying is like, who is that? Who who is similar? Because it's more Android users. But the thing is, I'm glad you said that. It's not about who's similar, right? It's about who's the best. Because the only reason why you'd want to invest in a company individually is you've identified that they're the market leader, right? The thing about the index fund is like investing in a mall, right? If you go, what's the popular mall here? King of Prussia. King of Prussia, right? It's probably hundreds of stores in there, right? Yes. If one or two or three of the stores close down, is the mall going to close down? No. Right? So mm. you only want to, and when you pick an individual company, you only want to pick the best. You don't want to pick the, oh, well, they also got market share, right? Because market share doesn't always mean that it's a great investment, right? Lyft, Uber have great market shares. I don't think they're great investments, right? So you want to pick the best, that's the best investment and a market leader if it so happens. And those are the only companies you want to invest in individually. Everything else you just want to buy them all. Because if they swap those stores out, it don't matter. The mall's still going to perform well, which is why I let Vanguard, BlackRock, I let all them do all the heavy lifting on that. And I figure out what are the few individual companies I need to invest in that are the market leaders. Now, what is, uh, like you said, at the end of the day, why Lyft and Uber is not? Because people look at Lyft and Uber and say they're doing anything. So what's the issue? You got to look at the actual business, right? It's a, it's a low margin business, right? Mm -hmm. So they do a lot of volume. But the business model itself, right? Uber, a little better than, than Lyft, but the numbers don't necessarily make sense. It's not enough margin for it to be really, really, really profitable, right? Whereas Apple has a brand ecosystem, right? They're selling you the, the AirPods. They're selling you the iPhone. They're selling you the laptop. They're mm -hmm. selling you the Apple Pencil. It's a brand ecosystem. At the end of the day, they have this thin margin on one main service. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to make it work. All right, now, now, in this flagship investment portfolio, what's all in there? If I'm just walking in there, I'm Johnny, Johnny know nothing. I don't really know what's going on. But I, you know, I said, I'm going to go, I'm going to text this number so I get this information. I'm going to text MDWG to 704-270-6477 to get this flagship investment yep. portfolio. And as I'm getting a free course or anything? Yes, you, you do a free workshop every single week. But I, I want to leave with value. I want you to literally come to the class with results, right? You can plug in that portfolio. And then before you come to the class, already have your investments. Then just come to the class to ask questions. But yeah, we do a free workshop every single week. So when you text that number, we'll send you that information as well. But we want to make sure that you got that first. All right, now. Hold we'll, on, we'll, you know, you put down a nice investment on that watch. <laughs> oh, yes, he did. He getting some money. Get that. <laughs> put some nice investment. Saying with that plain Jane mm -hmm. on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, my first investment was. Yeah, it was a. Uh, <laughs> I invested seventy thousand in his watch. Uh, no, so so I know this player. I've seen it. Yes, he did. What's inside of that? that yeah, event? yeah. So what's inside of it is we have as individual companies: Apple, Tesla. Inside here. Yeah, Apple, Tesla, Google, Amazon, and then we own two index funds. Um, so VOO, which is a popular index fund, anybody can Google that, mm -hmm. right? And also QQQ, right? So those are the main holdings, and also a company called Eli Lilly, which is in the pharmaceutical space. Oh, so y'all just killing. Yeah, man, it's, it's cool. Matter of fact, you know, success loves receipts, right? So let me just, let's see y'all know. Pull out them receipts. I know, Cal, you know, you know, you know, you know oh, shit. Cal. I love when they do that. See, I made 42 million in the last year. All right, so this is just one of my, this is just one of my accounts, right? For the year, right? So when you look at year to date, that's, that's the return, right? Just long term, nothing fancy, not trading options, not having to be an investment guru, just buying high quality companies at the right time. Screenshot this. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, y'all got to do it. I, 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 I'll set it up for y'all. I'm sure. Investing anything he invested in. No, Screenshot you, it. You, no, you just said it. Everything you said is here. Yeah, and, I'll, and, Apple, I'll, and I'll log oh, into the actual portfolio. You got I just Apple. Just, yeah. You got Tesla. You got Amazon. Oh, you're not playing. Yeah. So you making some Because people want to overcomplicate it, so you have to go through them. You I don't want you to have to go cake. through me, right? Yeah. I want you to be like, look, it's not that deep. This is how you do it. And that's why I want to give that to you first. So once you get proof, it's like, oh man, it's really not that hard. Now when I want to do the other things, like I want to set up an estate plan and build generational wealth. Okay, cool. Boom. I want to get my life insurance. Cool. Like you can do those things, but I want to leave with value first to show you it's not that hard to do. I like that. Yeah. Listen, well, if you want to get that melanin and money, man, what you need to do, you need to give my man George, aka pronounce your name right, George. Cause I call him <laughs> George Action Pack, because everything he's teaching you is action and it's packed with knowledge. It's George Achenpong. You can find me on Instagram. Same George Achenpong. Achim. Yeah. That's your real name? That's my real Achim name. Pong. Yeah. You, you know got a little Indian in you. <laughs> Ghanaian. Huh? Ghanaian. Oh, Ghanaian. He thought it was Achenpong. 
action punk. Okay, little nigga, little, little Indian in him. Uh, <laughs> what his, you need to do is people's on the Seven Eleven. Huh? <laughs> If you would, listen, man, you want to get down, man, you need to get that flagship investment portfolio. And he's going to get, how many, how often do you do the course? Like the free every, training? Every single week. And, every we got, single, and we got a podcast that's every single week. Listen, What's the name of the podcast? Week? The Melanin Money Show. The Melanin, the Melanin Money, Money Show. You, got the, you see that logo on the yeah, hat double right M. there. If, if, it's not, if it's not this double, double M, M, it's a knockoff. It's they a knockoff. want knock you to make them you know the black dollar, but it's really green. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, man, what y'all need to do is check to get this flagship investment portfolio. You need to text MDWG to 704-270-6477. Listen, man, check my man out, man. He's not playing no games. He's doing his thing. And listen, man, I might throw, you know, I might go ahead and, man, go buy some Apple, man, and some, uh, some uh, a couple other things. Hey, you know what's crazy? Why people don't just get everything that they buy the most? People are just trying to be consumers. They, it's right. so much stuff that we that it's I see. Somebody, literally, you could walk around. Like you want you using the iPhone, right? Um, no, everything I, is mine. I'm using the iPhone. I had a Tesla. I'm on Amazon. Anything buying something? People just got to get on the right side of the equation. Yeah, that's crazy. Right? People are always consumers, but they don't think to how can I get a piece of that ownership, right? Rich people do the right things. Wealthy people own the right things. Mm, talk right. Mm. And so, if you know, if you have a high income skill set, cool. You can go out and run it up, make as much money as possible. But at the end of the day, if you get hurt, if you get sick, if you get depressed, if you stop working, the money stops, right? But when you own assets, mm -hmm. right, that produce cash flow, ideally, then you really win. And I even really get into the sauce of like how I'm able to help people build wealth three times faster. This is this is that's just the starting point, right? The real sauce is when you invest in a portfolio like that, it's earning fifty seven percent in a year. You take that money and then you go buy something like real estate. Right, that real estate property is going to cash flow, but if you don't, if you still run an active business, you don't need that cash flow right now. So you take that money, you reinvest it back into the portfolio. So now you got the original portfolio earning fifty-seven percent a year in this in this example. You go buy real estate that's producing cash flow. That's investment number two. Mm -hmm. Then you reinvest that cash flow back into the portfolio. So now you're getting building wealth three times faster off the same dollar. Listen, man. Well, you heard that, man. This is another mm. episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game, man. Listen, man. Listen. This is my guy, George Action Palm. <laughs> George Action Palm. Yeah, he's a beast, man. He's doing Itchy Palm. Itchy Palm. What is it? <laughs> you know, a nigga. Itch, just, whatever it is, that nigga getting, itch. getting money. My name is Itchy Palm. <laughs> <laughs> the Palms itch. I feel the money money. coming. That's hilarious. <laughs> Once again, man, I want y'all to text MDWG to 704 2270 6477, man. Get that flagship investment portfolio and make it happen. This is another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game, man. We're not playing no games. Get that game, mm -hmm. get off the couch. It's just like that. Right. So, uh, to Jay, the way, the way you rap, you rap, rap. Do you find it difficult for you right now and your generation to come up outside of Kiss being your dad? Because. We do the other shit too, though. Yeah. Huh? Let him. I could cross he over. He do the other shit. No, no, but what I'm saying is, it seemed like I, I'm listening off your foundation, the pieces I listen to. The foundation is real. Do you find it, the journey? Do, do you find it difficult, like when you moving around trying to you know figure your your business side of things out with the labels and all that? Do you find it difficult in this time when they when a different you know every day a different sound is being promoted? We don't know what's going to be promoted and ran through the matrix. That was crazy. I just had that talk with my man yesterday. I was like, yo, sometimes it might feel discouraging, but nah, it'd be fun because it's like nobody else is doing it. Everybody else sound the same. So you hear like, yo, nah, that's something. He, yo, they asking for beats. Let me get a such and such type beat. Or I'm going to do this type flow. And it's like, that's cool. But I'm over here doing this. Like, you feel me? Ain't nobody doing it. So it's, it's comfortable. It's cool. It's refreshing. Like, I can hear my stuff and be like, all right, then go hear that. If I want to hear that, I might not want to hear it from you. I can hear it from this person. You're not going to hear what I got. From nobody else, though. Damn, that's major. And I'm going to keep it all the way real, too. That shit used to turn me off when producers do that shit, man. Send yeah. you a beat, and that's type it. Type beat? It sounds like a, somebody else. A such and such type, type beat. beat. Yeah. So it's like, well, send that to such and such, then, <laughs> motherfucker. What is wrong with you, man? You was thinking about this when you yeah. made this beat for this. He don't want it, so you now you sending me such and such type of yeah. beats. Send me a gilly type of Artists have asked for that though. I know. You know they got that right now. They could punch in the Gill type beat. Gilly the Kid they type got beat. You got that type shit? Hell yeah. Right now, YouTube. The f is that AI? Gilly, Gilly type of beat. And then. Oh. You know, any, any nigga that they got ever a, any came type out, of beat. they got, you can. 
But that's I bet little... you we pumping punching wallow type of beat. There's gonna be a drum and a snare and a and a sample. Of, I'm every woman. It's all in me. Anything yeah. you want now, baby? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Imagine you punching a beat and a wallow type beat, and that comes on. That shit would be nuts, dog. <laughs> I got listen, listen. I got a cat. I got a my catalog is stronger than yours. Let's got it. Let's just get let let's just get that simple. If you if you look at it, let me go right here. And cut this off. My catalog is stronger than yours. Look, I got real features. I'm on Conway, a big song on Conway. I'm on uh, all these different joints. I got a song on Larry June uh, album. I got I got songs all over. Look at my look at my OT 2C. the real. Oh, I'm on two C John. OT the real. I got big time features, bro. Like like my like, all, like my catalog all, is got crazy. You talking for twenty two seconds? Bro. What's mad with you? What's wrong with you? You ain't rap one verse. Ain't none of them. Conway, Conway, you for a rap. Conway. What you mean? Okay, ain't none of them called you for a rap. They call you yo. I got a song, low. I'm like I'm like Gil Scott Heron on these joints, no, talking that not. shit. I got a joint with uh everybody. Like come That's on, like man. if Kiss used you, he gonna call you yo. I got a song. Oh no, they go my biggest single though, right here, dripping. That was my biggest single right there. This is my biggest single, kids. They, they all, everybody want me to perform this. Yeah. Look at the cover. I'm dripping. See, this is the type of music young boy beat is up in the studio. But I'm you know what I'm saying, kids? <laughs> kids, that was a hit. Let me know if you want to do the remix. Kids don't want to get on that shit. Change the whole song. We gotta yeah. change the whole beat. The, the whole shit, bro. I'm just saying, man. Like, if you want to jump on that joint, listen. A lot of people hit me up about that joint, so you know. But I gotta, I gotta hold you the know, sky. Where you did that? And crack huh? and when you did that? Down north. Uh, I, I forget. I just did it. And somebody snatched it off it and remixed it. Sway the remix guy. Shout out to you. You're a big time producer, baby. Big things is gonna happen for you. Yeah, but no, it's like, <laughs> man. No, I'm just saying. I gotta give him a shout out. See, people don't acknowledge they producers. I mean, he down Atlanta doing big beats. But no, so so at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Gil say all this shit, All this. The first album Gil ever had, rap record he ever had, owned himself, was the one, the only, Vanilla Ice. Ice the Ice. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Don't believe that shit. It was NWA for Vanilla life. Vanilla Ice wasn't the first joint you had. No, it was you for life. Put that on you everything. Know, you put, it on the, put, put it on everything. It's on everything. What the fuck is you talking about? For well, life. Well, when did Vanilla Ice come? When, oh, when did Vanilla Ice come? You trying young, to when did Vanilla Ice come? I don't know. You never had Vanilla Ice. I had his tape. All right, say no more. <laughs> somebody bought that shit and had it in the house. <laughs> say no more now. Somebody had it in the house. I go purchase You thought you was Ice Ice Baby cruising and my five point oh with no. my ragtown down so my hair can blow. Ice Ice Baby. How the fuck you remember that shit? No, everybody did. Words, yeah. Yeah. Everybody did. I don't everybody know did. Everybody did. I know everybody. Everybody did, but you had that shit. He kissed, he had what that shit. What was he shit. cruising in? A 5.0, the rag top down so his hair can blow. Mm. <laughs> that, was, that was the song, it was a class. I every word that every, you really a hip hop story. Listen, That's listen. tough. That was a legendary song. It was. Ice like, Ice like, Baby's a hit. Like, he, like that's can't shit, run on Ice Ice. Like, 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 it's certain songs that 100 years more still gonna be getting royalties off of. Because it's certain songs that play in places we don't even dig it. Like, Sure got that, right? Yeah, sure. Oh, he sure. sold that. Yeah, he, no, I he mean, sure, it, I, I right? know he sure. had it. He yeah. went, he went and figured it out. I mean, but uh, the whole thing is like, did you ever run into Shug in your days? Hell yeah. How how was the how was the interaction? It was cool. It was you know, sugar, sugar. You know about life, like real. Shout out to Shug. We had real recognized real. Whenever I, you know, mm -hmm. he had he already had a relationship with D and Y, so mm -hmm. it was already like a. Establish respect level there for whenever I would be over there. It was, you know, it was I was cool. But then it was a time like he was popping up everywhere I was at. That shit was crazy. What you mean? Like say I have a West Coast trip and we just be anywhere. Um, on Sunset anywhere, and he'd just be. He just it's like somebody was calling them, telling them everywhere I was at. I think he was trying to get me on a song, but he was doing, he was doing it a little weird, but it never happened anyway. He was better off just calling somebody or saying, "Yo, I need kids," or 
I got this much money and this is the song. He was really trying to like mafia, mafia the verse out of me, but that shit didn't work. No, but you know what's crazy? It's funny you say that because one thing about LA, LA ain't like, it's like nowhere else because you'll be in LA and the dude at the airport, the Uber driver be from a set. So they know when you, yeah, like soon every you move, down, you, the you, hotel you, bell, man, everybody from a set somewhere, but you just don't know. And they be like, yeah, you know your man down at my, call you, man. You, you, man what's name? You, in the, you, you, you in the London, you, what's the name? Yeah, you in the, hey, what? My home, the home, the homie got you. You're like, what the? F-? So, uh, so you never, that's why it's back. good to have good relationships good relationship, and relationships with people. Yes. You never know. I yes, remember back in the day when I was on Cash Money at the motherfucking Source Awards. She got us the fuck about that joint. What do you mean? I don't even know why we ran out of that joint. <laughs> so you ran from Shug? Did you tell we got I'm gonna call Shug, man. I gotta talk to Shug. No, me and Shug I'm cool. Me and Shug done, oh, right. done busted up after that, done talked and I was on cash money. We was at the awards. We sitting right here, Snoop kinda sitting behind us. Yeah, that street now, man. I don't like that. Then walked up, he had them. A cigar in his mouth for one, and he just stood there. This whole motherfucking area was motherfucking nervous. <laughs> motherfucking, somebody <laughs> stood up and said something to him. I don't know if it might have been Snoop or something. Somebody stood up, said something to him. Next thing I know, they just passed the motherfucking. You know, I'm from Philly, so I know Snoop uh, Sugar ain't got no beef with me. So I'm like, damn, I'm looking like, yo, that's Sugar. Like, you know what fan, I mean? That's the first boy. time I seen him. I'm like, that's yeah. I was like, that's Sugar. He was a fan. What's wrong yeah. with you? And then it just went down the line. Yo, we about to get up and leave. Yo, we about to get up and leave. Yo, we... I'm talking about the war has just started. I'm like, wow, fuck is we leaving? Snoop Sugar ain't fucking, fucking with us. He ain't. <laughs> Play telephone. Yeah, we pay, they passed that shit down the line. Next thing I know, them niggas got up and left. And you ran out too? No, we 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 walked out. I did start running when Stunner and Slim dived in that motherfucking taxi. You fucking right. We came in motherfucking in, in limos, nigga. Sure. When you see the motherfucking seal talk about, taxi! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, baby, we is beefing. Taxi! Taxi! <laughs> I'm jumping in too. <laughs> You talk about you jumped in, oh, you jumped in the taxi. Yeah, right. Did you jump? Listen, how did how did how did you land? You Bro. jumped. You jumped through the Bro. window or the door was open. First how did you do all, this with dog. the window or the door? First of all, dog. <laughs> What's going on? Should in my mind, he not beefing with Cash Money, so I'm confused to why we even f- leaving the awards and the awards just started. <laughs> get f- like this. Sh- just started. <laughs> like hold up, hold up, cuz let me get the rec- let me record reflect. So when we when we finally. They get up, baby get up, Slim get up, they walk in, we follow them out, and then we get out the building to where the shit at, and the motherfucking, the CEO and the other fucking nigga that run the label say, we came in limos together. Taxi! <laughs> Pull off! Arf! Oh, oh my God. Cuss, 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 cuss. Is you Let me get, <laughs> Let me get this right. <laughs> How how many what I'm, year was it? had a lot of manpower. No. Th- listen. Bro, I know y'all was deep. No, listen. Yeah, you gonna think, listen, this shit gonna sound outrageous to you, bro. It was sixty-three of us. Oh yeah. Yo, you lying. How many taxis <laughs> you had? I mean, I mean, you let both That's y'all a lot of taxis. Hey, cuz that's a oh, wow, man. Bro. Sixty-three? Bro. <laughs> That sound like a car because he was in the West Coast. You bro, chose that number, bro. Most all of the niggas was up the top. It was just the artist was down the bottom. Why Everybody did, we came with was up the top. So why they, they were still there? It was just yeah, they were still there. They didn't even know we ran out the joint. Oh, hold on, <laughs> you did run. So let, let's establish that. Dog, I told you when I ran. <laughs> hold, hold on, hold on. When hold I on. seen them guys, that guys, the most important, the most important, the the most important thing. Did you dive through the window or was the door open? I jumped in that motherfucker. Then they said, what, what are you telling me to go? <laughs> to, to, go, go, get, get, the the get to the airport. <laughs> go, 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 go. Nah, I ain't leave this. I didn't leave Cali. Right then. No, we went to the hotel. Oh, right. hotel and then when everybody there? got the fuck back to the hotel, got we, got, we went to the buses. Listen, whether we, 
whether we came on a tour bus or what, we all came together, my yeah. nigga. Mm. When you see motherfucking the CEO talk about tax, hey, and then pull off and you watching that motherfucker pull off, you like, wait, hold on, is we beefing with these niggas? So you ran and you were scared based off of illusion, or you wasn't sure? I wasn't scared. I knew I was getting the fuck out of there. Based I just need to know. Why are you looking at I'm it trying like, to inquire okay. about this. Okay. <laughs> because on. I need to know what's really going on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Let me just say this. If you at a stadium, right, Kiss, and you look up and you see the whole motherfucking stadium running this way, the fuck you going to do, Kiss? Getting up and running that way. Okay. So Kiss don't even know what the fuck happened. Yeah. I ain't going to stand around and but get But you ain't going to stand around and yeah. wait. That's a fact. I didn't know we, I didn't think we was beefing with, with death row. But when them niggas dived in that cab like it was a pool. I heard them niggas say, did the go, go, did the go. go. <laughs> <laughs> I heard them say, Go, go, go. Oh, you know man, that shit. Yeah. You know that shit. Hip hop in the door. Go, go, fire. Kill was a yo. Yo, I don't want to. Don't tell. Don't say no tough shit to me ever again. No. Don't try to chuck no, me hold again, on, man. Because got it. I'm not but going years for this later, shit no more. Hold on. You want to know how real it is? Years later, she'll call me. Then it was like, What's up, Gilly? I'm like, what's up, dog? He said, yo, cash money owe you some money? You want to go get that? Let's go get that. I was like, dog, I, ain't, I said a lot of shit about the I ain't never seen them owe me no money. <laughs> <laughs> you were scared of shit. I think no, you were just scared of shit. You ain't want him nigga. to take your money. Get your publishing, that's all. Fuck out of here. One thing I ain't never said was no niggas owe me no, no money. What type of nigga would I be? Uh, niggas owe me some money. Fuck you talking about, yeah. nigga? Anyway, let's get back to Jay. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was some yeah. wild shit, though, man. Word. I wish I was that dead. That was wild. See, he would have, because it's a movie. It's like a movie. <laughs> like, dead. he had to say, like, yo, that would have been a crazy movie, 63, man. 63. 63, 63 bro. We I mean, y'all had to wait till after the awards for them to leave and all of that. Well, you want me to call Mickey right now? Call him and ask him. Did we did we run out the motherfucking awards because it should? fuck you talking about? Pretty sure Mickey was there. 63 individuals. No, they wasn't all together, though. They was up top. It was just like six artists, seven artists, eight people, maybe. Something like that right here. Me, maybe. So Mickey, for the Boo, call. Gotti. The, but you was a part of the track team that day. <laughs> <laughs> the, California, the, the California track team. You was a track man. Who, how many people was with Suge? <laughs> he, he was by himself. Nah. <laughs> I swear. I don't know. Oh, listen, I didn't see nobody else with him. I just see him standing up in the motherfucking aisle like this. I ain't seen nobody else with him. I'm pretty sure he had with him, but he was just standing up. It was man, listen to me, man. We got out of there, man. It wasn't back in the day, you know that West Coast shit was different, man. That wasn't from the West Coast was they wasn't with the West Coast like yeah, that. He was full. Because the niggas was food. Like Wallow said, they knew where you landed. They knew where you stayed. They knew all that shit. You was on the menu that night. Yeah, everybody was on the menu. Was it barbecue was the, ribs or bro, was you seafood? First of all, kiss. Let's keep it real. Bro, when you <coughs> touch down to L.A., if you wasn't know some certified niggas who yeah, had some say-so yeah. out that motherfucker, everybody was food. I told you, nigga, I was on vacation with a certain motherfucker and niggas called me talking about, we got such and such right here. What can we do with them? Like, yo, what, what, what? what do you mean? God, that's how that shit. That's how that shit used to be. You gotta understand before Instagram and all that shit, niggas didn't want fame. Niggas wanted your chain. Now they want the fame, gangsters. Your chain. No, now the gang. A lot of the time, the gangsters done turned into to to to. They just want that picture to put on that motherfucking gram. Mm -hmm. They don't want nothing from you. They want to be down there like this and put a motherfucking caption as lying. Kiss told me I'm the real raspy now. No, he didn't. <laughs> Kiss don't even f***ing know you. You just ask Kiss to take a picture. Yeah, that's like, so, it's, it, it's different now. Back then, it was no fame. It was no it was hungry. It was certain packs of that went to the club for one specific reason. Your f 
You Watch. belong in. T- yeah. yeah. <laughs> you belong you in. T- Let me ask you a question about New York City, right? Uh, do they need do they need spots like the tunnel to come back? Like not the tunnel, but spots like that. You know what's ill about that? Because I would love for it to come back. But the music got to change. Because if the, if it opened with the current state of music, that shit's just like a a slaughterhouse. Yeah. You play a bunch of that crazy shit in there, it's just they gonna every be week out. is dead. It's going to be Somebody. dozens of dead bodies in there. Mm. The music would have to, I would think, somewhat shift a little bit. Okay. You feel me? I because think I'm just it, saying you that energy. Yeah. It's the energy of the people that's there, the things they, yeah, it's, yeah. That's just Of deep. course we need, it's a definitely scarce on good clubs and there's no dance. There's no more dancing. There's no I more. Do. When, I'm yeah, when you get to them parties that's playing that shit that we like to hear, that music, that good feeling music that's no longer. No, he means your house stripping. He Yo, man, talking. get the fuck out of here. I'm talking about a dollar nuts. party. What are you talking about? You said, hey, you mad because you was the track star. You was a Los Angeles, oh, you was on Los Angeles track team. You That's why you, you mad. You know you was down yeah, low in the Dallas penitentiary. Get out of here. Give That's it a down crazy low. name. <laughs> down low. Get out of here. That's you crazy. Know? <laughs> you got, you got you out of pocket. Snaps is crazy. <laughs> He lying on me. He lying on me, though, kiss. <laughs> you want to jail stripper? Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> He's a liar. But no, you no, no, the reason I asked you that because it seemed like it's so many now, it's like they broke it down to the point where there was so many lounges and what's the name? Yeah, they broke the clubs down. They Think broke about the club it. That might down. be because of the music, though. Mm. Because it wasn't never... One club might get shut down and something happened with the the lease or the some, you know what I mean? They might have been moving something in there, but it was never it's just lounges right. <coughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Little lounges, walk It's through. all lounges, yeah. It's lounges and little speakeasies and shit like that. Well, Damn, let me yeah. ask you a question though. It Do is. you think that's that's gonna uh play a a part in in, you know, trying to fuck hip hop up? Because the the main the main source of income for hip hop artists is the club. Facts. Torn. No, the club. Why you say the club? Because no, but th- now let's switch to real. more venue like yeah. let's be for real. It's more the, venues the, like the now. The smaller yeah. artists before they ever hit a venue, they hit the clubs. Yep. You're getting them bookings. They get that five thousand, yeah. that thirty five hundred, that sixty five hundred. They get all they that. They putting you straight up from the incubator to TLA now. I'm on my way. I got 15 uh, million wins. Hey, Reg, hey, Reg, if you don't. Uh, hey, Reg, happy birthday. I'm getting you a karate suit. I got some, I got some money for you, okay? Yeah. All, All right. right, I'm on my way. Gil interrupted one of my karate sessions. He's looking with for Uncle Gil. Yeah, he's looking for me. I'm on my way. Yeah, you interrupted my karate session with him the other day. I was teaching him karate, and you uh, just told him oh, to get man, away from up. it. You he was teaching went. him jail jitsu, nigga. Jail Jitsu. Wrong. That's actually that's actually Not about, like Woods was talking about. They skipping it though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gil talking about our process. Mm-hmm. You get booked on the club. As you getting hotter, you now you start doing small venues. Then it, you work your way up, and the numbers go up. Now they going incubator straight to TLA. Oh, okay. And then yeah, it's no. Yeah, all that but club money. But you still money. gonna That's miss the, the club money. money. Yeah, you still gonna but miss the after party look what's money. What's going on now? Everybody's so bougie. Catch who's catching all the club money. Mm. These dudes you get to a point that they too big to go in the club. Or they mean. won't. I know some dudes that don't go to clubs. Y'all can book me right now for my single dripping. If y'all want to book me, I'm coming to all the clubs. Seventeen fifty. I need all what? No, 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 no. My number ain't got no proof of concept. No, no, no. no. I'm a book. Listen, I got the promo platform. So what I'm gonna do is I got you and me. We gonna promo. I take twelve, twelve fifty right now. Now you know I'm taking twelve fifty. Yeah, twelve hundred, twelve hundred, twelve thousand. Twelve five. Yeah, twelve five. Listen. This is what I'm saying. Twelve thousand and fifty. But, but you know, I'm price is twelve thousand and fifty. Don't you hard? 
Yeah. Look, what you doing with that 50? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> this, 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 <laughs> no. We're going to go. Listen, for real, for real, I'm really, I really just want to, f- a dime. So I'm cool. So we going, no, oh, wow, I got it. Come on, run it. Let's get it. I'm on my way to, and I'm a tear. Listen, as an artist, I don't care who you are in the country. One of the best places on the artist coming up to be is from right here in the East Coast, the Philadelphia, Jersey area. And I'm going to tell you why. This is the only place in America from New York down where you can hit five cities in three hours. You got New York. You got the whole Jersey. You got Philly. You got Baltimore. You got D.C. and everything in between Delaware. And Connecticut. Listen, listen, you go up there, you too. Start there and then, this, and then D.C. If you could get popping over here, you could be a millionaire just from over here. Because the streams and all that stuff, the video, they booking you. They will book you to death in Jersey, mm-hmm. Delaware, Facts. Maryland, Facts. DC, VA. They gonna book you. I, I, mm-hmm. I, it's so many, and you could kill it. And you could be a, you could be a. I'm talking about a lounge legend. You could be Ooh, a lounge legend. A lounge legend. <laughs> That's hard. Because well, them boys, them boys gonna pay you just because a lot of them dudes. They gonna if you all you gotta do is get pop. A lot of them dudes. They some dudes ain't even worrying about. The return on investment. They just want to be the dude. That, yeah, I'm See, the first one to bring. Yeah. I'm the first one to bring little shoot him up down here. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody bringing. Mm-hmm. So now you get booked. That's why youngins make sure you got a good manager. If you got a song that's popping and you ain't a lounge legend, if you ain't running through them lounges getting them books, look. And then now the game is so crazy. You got so many different marketing games. You got the boys that selling the sneaks. They need promo. Everybody want promo. They want to bless you. They want you to. Pro- Everybody got a bag out there. So if you if you a young cat, you rapping and you ain't running around a lounge legend, get rid of your manager and call me. I so Jay, you. what you got going on, bro? Got some new music coming out. More music. When got some coming. videos coming out. Top of the year. We in the top of the year. So I'm thinking February, end of February, early March. Yes. Got two projects done right now. Just waiting to drop. A lot of features. Got something out right now with Capella, Gray, and Dream Doll. Mm. That's Called amazing. Store Run. I saw work, his winner young mixtape. Man, work, work. Feel you me? shooting a visual for that? Yeah, we working on that. That's his song, actually. We working mm. on that. And then Still I'm working shoot. with a new artist yeah. um, from the Bronx named Apollo Ray. He tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I'm going to say this. Got a big move on the coffee side coming, yes. too. We about to purchase a, 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 nice, a nice piece of property in um, Brooklyn. Okay. Um, It's going to be nice. Look out for it. the grand opening? Information. Uh, we got to finish the paperwork on okay. the building. Oh, there's no. And we're, we're launching. Let me know that. we coming through, man. Yeah. The grand open. Definitely need y'all Kiss to pull Kiss Cafe. Yeah. KissCafeCoffee.com. I might get DJ to join if y'all need. You know I do DJing on the side. Damn, yeah, you do it all. Yeah, yeah right. Nah, anything dealing with hip hop, I care. I'm I a just manager. Want to book you one shot. You do graffiti? Shop. Yeah, I need Listen, you, fam. Huh? You do graffiti? I need. I might just want to book you. I used to write. I ain't throw the blows. I just, I just, I'm like, you know, I write. I might want a one stop shop. DJ, artist. And host seminar, a uh, speak. I need you to speak, rap, and DJ. Right. Now the speaking What's part. The, that's, for? the speaking Coming part. To the is, stage, the, DJ. Baby now listen, shorts. because it's you, kiss. Because, baby shorts. Because it's you, kiss. <laughs> I'm gonna break it down. The speaking joint is where you get hectic at. For right. the speaking, that 45 minutes question and answer, the red of 15. That's anywhere from 40 to. Seventy five thousand. So all we right. gonna wipe that. I'm gonna give you a budget though. But you mean the, flat but, all right, the flat number. the flat number. Now my single, it ain't. It's a little cold right now. So I ain't gonna hurt you on that. <laughs> bitch, been cold. I could, I could do that for twenty five hundred. Right. I could do the single, the DJ joint. Give me, you give me five hundred for that. Claim, make, yeah, make, but, but box of oodles and noodles. Make that three thousand. And just because if it's for the Let's kids, go forty five fifty. We get yeah. forty five thousand and fifty dollars. Seventy five dollars. Come on. Forty five seventy five. Yeah, let's get We can shake on that. He's trying to show the young. That's how he negotiate. He want no, a twenty five dollars on no. a forty thousand dollar joint. No, that's what's the seventy five dollars for? No, that's double f- negotiations. Yeah. That's like a motherfucker yeah. say, yeah. "I give you a million dollars right now." And then say, "Take it a million twenty five dollars." Give me a million you know twenty five. I mean? <laughs> I'm just saying, man. You know, I, I gotta get my, I gotta get my name out there. This is all about young my boys how to do f- up negotiations. Oh no, they know man. they come and get with me. They gonna be rich. <coughs> I mean, now, now, to Neff. Um, you and your dad, y'all got a song together, right? Nah. Now, when when this song you happened, know, you know, I'm not even, I didn't even engage in his. I didn't. He do everything on his song. own right now. All right, now if you get on the joint, how many times you gonna rewrite that rap when you get on the joint with your dad? You ain't gonna never have to rewrite. You just coming in one nah, time. No, I'm gonna just go with what I he feel is on my heart. Yeah, yeah, you feel me? I might have to give it to him and let him sit with it. Okay, damn. Neff, I don't give 
He gave it to you for five years, Neff. Yeah. You know you're getting baked, right? Nah, I gotta keep it real I'll with you. I put my Neff. money on Neff. Neff is getting barbecue. Baked. Fuck, this is a sport. Let me just tell you something. This is a sport. And the one thing about your dad, he loves this shit. It's like trying to outcook your mom. You think you gonna make this? No, 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 no. That's a hell of a joint. That's a hell of a joint. Never said outcook his mom. Never at all. At all. At all. At all. Time will tell. Yeah, he fucked you up like that, Neff. That's like saying, yeah, I'll cook your and mom. Mama love the only one that can show you step by step how she making it. You do the same thing and it come out horrible. Or oh, yeah. shit come out marvelous. Your shit tastes like you cooked it with rocks. That's what I'm just now, saying. I'll probably sit with it, though. No, you yeah, don't sit with it. I'm about it. Bro, sit help me, help listen to me, you. Neff. Neff, listen to me. I mean, me. it ain't about yeah. it. You're going to sit with it and you're going to come with your best shit. Facts. That's going to be your best you shit. You're getting barbecue baked. No. <laughs> if it's my song, it ain't coming out. You hate it on this pop. You gotta put it out. He shoot the video. You see? Nigga hate it on this pop, man. God damn, man. And shoot the video when y'all had a new spot. Have a deep joint. Have it and see the way not to get cooked. You come up with a song talking about some some family or whatever. No, see, you know what you mean? to see you trying to give him a bitch ass route out. No, no, this is about competition. Come talking that shit. Yeah. Your dad gonna barbecue bake you. This gonna be a once in a lifetime thing. You gonna have a beat. You gonna already know what joints you gonna I get gotta on. Take the lead you gonna on have it. that shit for a minute. Yeah, take the lead. You gonna when you come to him, you gonna be like, Dad, yeah, I'm ready. He gonna like, let me hear what you got. When you talk that shit, this gonna be a shot. All right, gonna, all right I got you. Then when he jump on that joint, first of all, back. first of all, your dad gave you, he gave you some flow. He gave you some game. He gave you some flyness. You know what your dad did not give you? The voice. But let me say this now. He said, get on that hook. Just keep this. <laughs> in the event, in the event, when you ready to do this song, get with me. You know I wrote a lot of his stuff. I was the a good writer. Yeah. Some of his best stop material. Stop lying to young niggas, man. What? You gonna stop respecting you. We ain't right. I love being a gangster. I wrote a lot of his shit. Not that one. No, he ain't. I, I wrote like two bars out of that. Yeah. I used to send him raps from home. What the fuck out of here? I used to send him raps from home. <laughs> From home. But man, we just want to thank y'all for coming in, man. Appreciate thank y'all you for listening. having us. Kiss you Cafe. Always, man. Kiss go support. Cafe. Go support it. Listen. Kiss go Cafe Coffee.com. Get right. with that, man. And I'm about to get out of here, man. I got to go to my, yeah, my, my nephew. Yeah, nephew looking for Gil. Yes. Happy birthday to, party, to nephew. Man. Happy Appreciate birthday. you, my brothers, for life. Yes, sir. Yeah. Always show love, not only on camera, off yes. camera. You when nothing's know. going on. You, you know what I mean? We tap in. We yes. locked in. Yes. It's real sincerity over here. Yes. You know what I mean? My guy. Y'all step your game up. For life. Step your frame up. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes, sir, Ski. I'll show you how to step the flame up. Mm. Pay attention. That's it. Mm. That's it. You ain't got to say nothing. Else. And it's just like that. Right.